everybody welcome to the soulful eclectic i'm your host diana collins and i want to welcome you to today's episode if you are new joining us thank you so much for taking the time out to join us and listen to what we have to talk about today i truly appreciate you and your time if you are coming back and you've been here and you've listened and you've joined in the conversation i want to say welcome back welcome back welcome back and thank you thank you thank you for taking the time out to be here with us on this episode and so many more and many more to come right so um first and foremost i want to um apologize for my voice uh, as you guys remember from last episode when i talked about influenza coronavirus and uh, rsv and you know immunizations this is a season for everyone to get sick well guess what yours truly got sick um, my husband had the flu and I thought I was doing a really great job fighting it with all my vitamins and herbs and teas and so forth. Well, apparently it hit me. Prayerfully, it didn't hit as hard as it hit him. Um, I did have a little achy fatigue, but not as bad as he had it. He was like the typical, oh my God, I'm dying kind of guy. Um, and that is so not him. So... Um, I did not have it that bad, but it is still lingering on, as you can hear. Um, I think it actually has gone into a sinus infection, so I'm taking care of that um, as well. Unfortunately, I, you know, being a nurse practitioner, I can't write for my own meds, so I do have to go see somebody else to give me the meds that I need and then, you know, fight with them to give me what I want because they want to give me what they think I should have and I know what's going to work. It's a whole long drawn out thing. But anyways, um, so <clears throat> again, excuse me for this lovely raspy voice of mine that I have at the moment. Um, it, 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 some days, some days it feels like it's getting better and then I just totally feel like a car hit me. Um, so today is one of those days at the moment I am going to run with the show and do what I can until I get tired and fatigue out, which uh, hopefully will not happen anytime soon during this conversation. But if it does, please forgive me. I will bow out gracefully and uh, we will pick up again on yet another Friday evening, right? But anyways, so um, I today is a relationship day, right? Because I wanted to talk about relationships and where we are in our relationships. I know during coronavirus, the pandemic, all these things we've been forced to, I want to say forced, but we had the opportunity. Let's put a positive light on it. We have had the opportunity to be in the company of our significant other and not be interrupted, okay? Um, not by our choice, but it's okay. We took the opportunity and we seized it. Some of us did. Um, I think we talked about this early on as well, that some of us realize that we have this uh, negative polarity towards one another and that we, you know, maybe don't really have that like for each other. You may love them, but you may not like them as much, um, whichever, however it played out. And then, you know, um, there definitely can go a little darker than that, but we're not going to go that dark today. We're going to keep it as light as possible. Um... And so, anyway, so some of the things that we um, were able to do during that time was begin build, rebuild that closeness with one another. Um, if you had children in the home, you, you bonded with your children and your spouse. If it was empty nesters like me and my husband, we reconnected and figured out us and, you know, rebuilt us. Unfortunately... Um, I'm not going to say unfortunately because it was fortunate. My husband was going to school at the time, so he was out the house a lot um, doing his clinicals and things. So um, it, he was able to do those pieces, but uh, we still were able to connect and, and build and do those things. So and learn a lot about one another. And for us, that's very valuable because uh, we forget, we grow, right? We forget that we grow and evolve as human beings and we always want to look at that person in the light in which we met them and that is not um, 
it's not accurate it's not accurate it gives you a false sense of who that person is and then you're constantly fighting for that person to be who they were when you met and that's just not who they are today and so relearning who who we are to one another and who we are as individuals is is key and we're still doing that we're still building on that and some days we fall really short um, I know in the past few months when we were trying to figure out me finishing my doctorate, um, he's working in a new job as a family nurse practitioner. So, you know, him trying to get his footing into that and then trying to figure out if that is exactly what he wants to do. So we have all these other changes that are happening. And then me adding in there that I, I am an actress as well. So I have... Um, filming that I'm doing, I have auditions that I do, and then I have my businesses also on the side that I, I have. So um, yeah, I'm pulled in a lot of different places. And honestly, when we're sitting together, I, I am really not present because I'm still thinking about the, the plethora of things that are going through my mind, like many of us do, especially women. We always have something going on in our mind. Um, it's what uh, our therapist called the spaghetti brain because we always have something going on instead of focusing on one thing we have what she called the spaghetti brain um and i i like that terminology that she is she says you know some of us are spaghetti brains where we have all these twists and turns and all of them are connected somehow and we make them connect um and then we have those of us who are waffle brains where you know we are they, they stop and compartmentalize everything that they can't move on to the next thing until what is in that one waffle square is completed and then they can move to the next waffle square. And sometimes, I, you know, you can be both, um, but most of us are either one or the other. And I think depending on the day, I'm more of a spaghetti brain um, because I do find ways to connect things. And my husband looks at me like, how did you think about, you know, telling me about a tire needs to be changed when we were talking about, you know, going bike riding or doing something I was like oh because they have tires and you know so I can make connections really weirdly um and then remember to re um tell him about things and he's like how did you connect that I don't understand how we have in this conversation recall that thought and I can't explain it to him and he's got that waffle logical brain where you know it everything is compartmentalized and it makes sense and depending on the day, I don't operate like that. I operate like that at work. To be honest, when I'm at work, I'm very um, regimented and compartmentalized with things. But once I'm home and I have to do my own thing and I have my businesses and things going on, I'm very uh, spaghetti brain. And I have a hundred things going on in that spaghetti blob of my So really quickly, think about who you are as a person and, you know, are you are you that spaghetti brain type person that that you got like a hundred things? Think of a spaghetti ball. You know, you, I think a lot of us have made spaghetti, right? Think of that spaghetti ball. In that spaghetti ball, something is connected and is intertwined, and or or ball of yarn even, right? Ball of yarn. Um, and how can we make those connections and, and we find a way as as individuals, as humans, I don't want to say as women, because that's just really generalizing it. And that's not true um, because anyone can be a spaghetti brain um, is, you know, just depends on who you are and how you operate. Um, so, yeah, so it, it, it was just that kind of brought to my attention and we are working on you know, further connecting and reconnecting and, you know, communicating. Communication is key. And I, I want to say that, you know, I, I know for us in the black and brown community, we uh, see therapy as a non it thing, right? You know, because we don't do therapy. What do, what do you mean? We handle our problems. We deal with it. But um, we do need someone to help us communicate because a lot of us don't communicate effectively because we don't know how to communicate effectively. We've seen bad communication so often growing up that we think it's it's the way to communicate and it's really not effective communication at all. And that's how a lot of uh, miscommunications happen. That's a lot of how a lot of fights happen and, you know, just disagreements and things like that. So you want to work on that as 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 a couple 
and as an individual, right? Because I always try to figure out how to communicate better because I know I am not a really, I don't communicate well at all. Um, my cousin, I think is I, for me personally, it's because I have a hundred things in my brain and I compartmentalize what I'm going to say and when I'm going to say it. So sometimes I don't deem things as important and want to share at that moment. And sometimes, you know, it, it, somebody else wants to hear it's like, Oh no, that's something you should have told me. And it's like, Oh my bad. Um, I didn't think it would be a big deal. So I think we talked about this a little bit about over communication. That's how I feel like sometimes that I'm doing like I'm over communicating, like I'm sitting here writing down everything that I've done so that when I see you, I can communicate to you all the things that I've done. Um, and I know it's, it sounds like uh, that's, that's just a really interesting way to put it or, you know, just a way to say it. But it's, it's just what it is. I, that's how it feels to me that we're just over communicating some things and and it's just that that your partner has been away for x amount of hours in their day doing their job or you know doing their thing and then you've been wherever doing your thing and then now you come together and it's like okay what did you do today and it's like you see it as tedious like oh, man I, I did so much I don't know um uh, whatever I, it, it's been a busy day that's not effective communication because that person genuinely wants to know what took place in your day and you feel like you are shutting them out from being a part of that day that they miss and they just want to catch up to what they miss and that's the way that I see it and had to start really seeing it so that I can um, put a different spin on you know how I see our communication and how our communication can get better. So we're constantly working on that and we have taken a little bit of a breather at one moment, but um, with us getting ourselves back on track with our life and what we have going on and our goals as a couple, um, we have started to reincorporate some things. So I, I thought I'd come on and share a couple of things with you guys. So um, I know... Um, one of the things that we, you know, talk about is that we, we, how we appreciate one another. Do, you, do, do Does your spouse or your significant other know how much you appreciate them? Do you tell them that you appreciate them or do you just take it for granted that they know that you love them and appreciate them? So, um, when we talk about healthy relationships and healthy conversations, uh, one of the things that is suggested is that we have a weekly meeting, right? It's like we, we have meetings at work. I know people are like, I meet at work. I do this at work. I don't want to come home and have a, a meeting here as well, right? But let's be honest. Um, that's how we can effectively check in if we have a designated time, especially if you both work full-time jobs and have other activities outside of work and home. That is a good time to really get together and set down what's happening in the house and then, you know, what's going to move forward as we're going on to the next meeting. Because let's face it, guys, our house is a business. Our house is our first business, first and foremost. And if our, our business at home is not in order, then how are we going to take care of everything else on the outside? So one of the things that was suggested was like, well, I know it's, it sounds crazy, but they call it the state of the union meeting, right? <laughs> I don't know how we got that, but that's what they call it, the state of the union meeting. So um, it's a conversation that you have once a week with your partner um, and it maintains a healthy relationship and conversation. The state of the union meeting is just what it is. It's like, you are sitting there together and you're reflecting on your relationship. Both partners are sharing um, things that are working in the relationship very well. Um, and also things that that may need to be addressed that we just didn't touch upon. Uh, whether it be a disagreement, may, whether it be a purchase, a trip, whatever. Things that need to be addressed that we kind of kept putting on the back burner. So... Um, this way that we don't allow things to build up 
over time and lead to bigger fights and or placing you guys at uh, us all at distance from one another right because the one thing you don't want to feel like is that you and your spouse are roommates right that's that's like no you don't want to feel like that and if that is the case and one of you do feel like that how do you change that what what's going on that is making that person feel like you guys are now roommates right so that's something to think about as well so you know when you have that state of the union conversation it helps you connect and stay connected and stay engaged in your relationship where you know because we're so distracted with everything like even me I, I mean because I'm trying to focus on so many things and I say trying to focus because I can't really focus on um, more than one thing because you know there's no real thing as multitasking no one does that successfully right so um, I have different things that I'm doing so I have my acting part of me my education part of me my skincare part of me my podcast part of me so you know I'm always pulled in different places so any given time I'm on social media making sure I got this post out this thing out and I miss it you know every now and again I miss things um, but I know that I am not engaged so I have to mindfully tell myself put my phone down why because one I see my husband's face oh my gosh the looks he gives when I pick up my phone is like a dagger going through me I'm just like geez I just wanted to see what time it was kind of thing and it in it just it it's for me it's a trigger right um i'm just gonna put it out there that's a trigger for me it's like what the hell right so um and he doesn't say anything which adds to it as well so talking about those things are going to be key and we talk about that it's like hey i saw you make a face when i picked up my phone did you feel some kind of way? And that opens up the floor for him to say yes or no or no, no, no. I was just thinking about something else or whatever the case may be. But it leaves that room for him to answer and not for one to assume, right, that something is going on. So that's kind of where you want to bring that. And that's how the State of the Union meetings tend to work. So, you know, we... we if you guys are in any type of leadership position, you know, we give the, the compliment sandwich kind of thing when we we're talking to our subordinates about different things, right? So we give them a compliment, we give them the problem, and then we give them a compliment kind of thing. So here's the thing. We don't want to just dive right into our State of the Union conversation with all the things that are going wrong in the relationship you never want to do that because then everybody shuts down you have the big wall going up and no one's going to effectively communicate effectively communicate right so you definitely want to start off with appreciations what do you appreciate about your partner um either this week you want to keep it in the present, right? Because you want to keep it as those, um, as we say in nursing, those smart goals, right? Um, you want to keep it in 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 the present, make it measurable to what you're doing now, um, and just you know, in the first part of the meeting, it just take turns with one another, sharing at least five things about each other that you've done in the past week that um, you appreciate it. Um, make sure that you know that it's a positive trait, you know. Um, so, um, I, I don't know. Let me see if I can give you an, an example. So, uh, oh, I appreciate how considerate you were this past week when you picked up your clothes and the dry from the dry cleaner when I ran out of time, right? Something as simple. Or, like, I cooked this week um, when he went out to work. And so, he was like, I appreciate that you cooked and it really helped me out because he does 90% of the cooking now. I know it sounds weird, but guys, I spent 40 something what I am 48. So I spent 30 something years of my life cooking for everybody, um, for my children, for my significant others. I cooked constantly. So, um, it's, it's a breath of fresh air for me, for my husband to be the cooker, the, the cooker, <laughs> excuse me, the chef in the house. 
so I tend not to cook as much um, so it is a plan for me to cook because as I expressed in the past I am vegan so I don't cook as much because it, it's it's a lot of effort to cook a vegan meal because you really have to think about it and the flavor profiles and where you want to go and it's just it's a whole production right so I just don't do it that often and I know I should um, so I try I am trying to pick and choose different days that I will uh, cook a little bit more uh, most of the time we cook big meals so we can eat off of them for two or three days but um, that was one of the things he said he's like I appreciate that you cooked today dinner today it took a you know it I didn't have to think about it I didn't have to worry about it and I appreciate that so whatever it is whatever big small I appreciate that you know you fixed the lawn you, you know you picked up the dog's poop whatever <laughs> whatever it is you want to start off with appreciation all right and then you want to go right <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you want to talk about what went right in the relationship, right? What went right? And I know everybody's like, what do you mean what went right? I mean, we're, we're together, we're here, we're not fighting. Um, um, you, you sit there and you want to talk about things that are working in the relationship, right? What are What's improving? What's going well in the relationship? So, um if you've had a stressor this week or this past week and you both worked well together as a team in navigating it, that's what, something you want to talk about. Uh, whatever it may be. If if you guys went hiking and, you know, if one of you got lost and you guys figured it out together and came back to the trail safely, that was successful week because you worked together and problem solved together. So that's just an example of that piece um or maybe you can discuss where you both had a schedule of date and schedule a date together um that's a good day too um that's something that i think we talked about in the past as well make sure you guys have date nights right we've slacked off a of date nights for a while um because life got in the way and then we're just starting to slowly re regroup ourselves back into our date nights. I'm very bad at planning date nights because I feel like they have to be these these elaborate kind of of things that we do, and they're really not. It could be just as much as just going to go get ice cream together or going to get a cup of coffee and sitting down and talking together. But it's a date night where you, it's just the two of you hanging out together. So whatever, plan a date night together. Um, the, the therapist out there in the world suggest that you have a date night at least once or twice a week now you have some people that are overzealous and they go out every night and that's their date night and kudos to them I don't like to be around people that much so um I don't want to go out every night but your date night doesn't have to be outside either your date night can be inside too because we've had paint date nights in the house where we've gotten our paints and art supplies out and we sat together and had neither one of us drinks so we had mocktails and we sat there together and we painted and we talked while we painted or drew right so it's just those things and we and I think we talked in the past too we've taken a class together we've taken a class a glass blowing class together where we were in making paperweights and glass trinkets and it, it was it was those kind of things but that was our date that was a camp like a three-day camp that we did but that was our date nights we would you know go and learn how to blow glass safely so it's just whatever it is that you enjoy doing you both enjoy doing you don't want to pick something that one or the other enjoys I mean unless it's something you don't particularly enjoy but you know your spouse does and it's like all right let's do this this time that's fine too but don't make it that it's a tit for tat kind of thing you want to make sure that it's something you both enjoy doing right um then from there uh after you guys have talked and went through the relationship and what went right in the relationship each one of you should select an issue to talk about or process um 
in the meantime, and it, it doesn't mean, matter what it is. It, it could be something that you need to talk about, something that um, happened that you regret and you just want to hash it out further. Um, that That's a part, too. So select an issue to talk about or process any regrettable incidents. So, excuse me, this is where you really think about what what transpire in your conversations did you guys have a disagreement did you leave it in a good place and did you like how you felt during that time did you have regrets about what you said or what you did that's this is a time to really go over this so it's like at this point you guys are going to take turns sharing any concerns you have about the past week any conflicts that um were inevitable and necessary um, in the relationship. Um, so you want to do this. You want to handle this constructively. Uh, you will feel like you're better connected afterwards. Um, so it's like you, you, you have to really forgive each other for the things you've said, especially if you said something in the heat of an argument. You know, I know you guys, I don't know if you guys ever watch Marriage Boot Camp. Um, Judge, Judge Toller, I love her and I miss her there terribly. I know she's uh, recovering from her loss of her husband and dealing with that. I can't even say recovering because that, that was a big loss. That was her, her road dog, her ace. So um, I can't even imagine how she's, you know, making it through day in, day out. But I give her all the props because... Um, if you guys haven't watched Marriage Boot Camp, you can watch the old ones where she's on it. But she does talk about that fighting fair um, kind of thing. And uh, if you find that you are pulling punches and you're not, you're you're going to say something that you're going to regret. That's where you just stop and just say, you know what? I feel like I'm going to say something that I'm not. Go, I, that I can't take back so I'm going to just stop this conversation at this moment and uh, we're going to have to revisit this and that's okay that's okay that's perfectly fine and acceptable because it happens the goal here is to take the time and atone for those um, opportunities where you misspoke and that's that's where that, that starts so um there's this lovely acronym that they use during this whole process when you have any conversation. The first one is awareness. So you're being you're aware of both you and your spouse's feelings and the experience that had taken place, right? Um, so it's almost like acknowledging. You're, you're aware, acknowledging, and you're being mindful. Um, then it, there's that tolerance, right? That you guys are two different people and you have two different opinions and both your opinions are valid. Both your viewpoints are valid. Um, and your your negative emotions are valid. So you want to validate each other and where you are, right? And then turning toward. You want to recognize that you and your partner both need and that turning toward it, that you need to face it, um, face each other. And then there's that whole understanding part piece, right? You have to attempt to understand your partner's experience and their perspective. That's the hardest one for, for many of us because it's like, no, I did not say it that way and I didn't mean it that way. But at the end of the day, your partner perceived it that way and that's the way they took it. So um, we have to acknowledge that. And when we speak to I've gotten to the, the habit of when I, I say things, you know, I say um, what you said from what from what you have spoken to me, I this is what I took from it or I perceived this from what you said. This way that person has the opportunity to clarify further if if they didn't mean it that way or no, it was taken out of context and, and that's okay, but you want to communicate that. Be non-defensive, okay, in your listening. I know that's the hardest one, too, because we listen to reply, not listen to understand and, you know, to hear what the person is saying. So listening 
to your individuals, to, to each other, right? And listening to each other's perspective without um, us concentrating on victimizing ourselves. Or, or the other thing is reversing the blame, right? Because we, we don't want it to be on us. So we're like, no, it's your fault. No, that's not what it's about. Otherwise, this conversation and the argument continues and can escalate very quickly. So you you want to listen open, openly, be non-defensive, and just be ready to um, repeat back. I, I'm always about to teach back, repeat back. So what I heard you say is this, right? And it's like that gives that person the opportunity to say here that you paid attention to what you what they said. And also to clarify if your perception of what they said is what they actually intended, whether it is or it isn't, that's their opportunity to, to communicate that piece. And they be, be empathetic, responding to your partner with an understanding and awareness and um, sensitivity to their experience and their needs is really important because you want that same empathy for yourself as well. So you want to be empathetic to them as well. Um, and, and during that whole atonement to one another and be, make sure you take turns. Don't, you don't want to talk over one another. I know this is like, oh my God, therapy. Did we go to this today? Um, but this is really important guys, because the rate of divorce in this country is amazing. And I got married. This is my first and only marriage. And I don't intend to just divorce willy nilly because it's easy. Yes, divorce is easy. Marriage is hard and it takes work. And this is a work that you're putting into your relationship. And I, I tell individuals, if they're planning to get married, you should start going to therapy now. Find a counselor to help you communicate. Even if you think your communication is great and it very well may be, that's amazing. Strengthen it. There's nothing wrong with strengthening that communication between one another. Because it just makes you guys be better and be a better team. Because if you're a better team, nothing can break that team up, right? Um, and that's what you want to continue to work on and build on. It doesn't mean you have to go to therapy every two weeks, every month, whatever works for you. But I like to do like a little check-in. So this was like a check-in for us. Like, where are we? Can we fine-tune some things? Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. doesn't mean there's something wrong with your relationship. It just means that you want to maintain the integrity of your relationship and what you believe for yourself and for your spouse and for you guys as a couple, right? And you always want to work on things individually and together because we are individual people. And as I said in the beginning, we are all evolving. And so having that ability to come together as a whole and talk about the differences that we have grown into is really important because th that you know that's the worst thing you wake up and the person next to you is is a different and you're trying to figure out how the hell that happened where you know something as simple as checking in and communicating having a state of the union meeting once a week would have informed you early on that these things were changing right before your eyes and that um you know here we are so you want to share your emotions that, you know, always don't try to over talk one another or criticize your partner. You, if you're, if that your partner's speaking, you're listening. And if you're, you're speaking, your partner's listening. And that's just the way it goes. You don't want to over talk one another. Um, and you want to say things like, I feel right. And then that's, that leads to an emotion. And then, you know, um, you want to be specific about your situations if you're talking about a situation and then always um, share what you need. What do you need from your partner? Um, this one is the hardest one for many people to share what they need because a lot of us have not taken the time to really think about what it is that we do need from ourselves, from our partners. And so um, that one is like, it's hard for some men to really say what they need. Um, and I am learning that as well. Um, because we as women tend to 
always share, always share what we need, right? But I, I need this. I need you to hold my hand. I need you to, you know, kiss my forehead, whatever. You know, I'm just making up stuff, but um, just those things, right? I need you to do these. I need you to take the garbage out once a week without me telling you, whatever. Anything. But we are always so good to say what we need. Um, but gentlemen, men are not very, especially men of color, uh, black and brown community, they don't share very well um, what it is that they need because they were raised that, you know, they're supposed to be the man in the house, they're strong, they do this, and we're trying to change that dynamic and have everyone open up and communicate effectively of what they need. Um, so when you when you have all these pieces, right, and you've you've got you've talked about what you need, what what the the problems were, you did the whole compliment sandwich, and now here you are at the end. Um what are you going to close it out with? You want to close it out with something positive. You don't want to just leave with this heavy conversation. Remember, it's a, like a whole compliment sandwich. So um, I tend to end the conversation with, I appreciate you sharing with me. I know it was hard um, for you to really get that out and be honest. And I appreciate you taking that time out. And thank you. Um, and then, you know, whatever else you want to say kind of thing. But um, I, I try to put a, 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 a appreciative spin on the end of it. Um, so now you're leading into next week, right? Oh, the thing I didn't say, your meeting should not be more than an hour. Okay, guys, let's not be a whole uh, WWE match. No. It's not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be an hour. So my suggestion would be to set a timer, um, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever, so that you don't go past that. Once the hour is done, your conversation is done, and you table whatever, excuse me, you table whatever is left to the next meeting, okay? Um, and that's just the way it should be. Um, just like we wish our, a lot of our meetings and at work go, right? Um, it's an hour, Okay, we didn't finish talking about that. We're going to table it to next time, not keep going for another hour or two. All right, and I don't know if you guys have been in those meetings, but I know I have, and they are horrendous. So don't do that at home because then you guys will be dreading your State of the Union meetings, and you don't want to dread the meetings. They're supposed to be your moments to catch up, talk to things out with each other, check in emotionally and, you know, schedule your dates and trips, whatever, whatever your state of the union is supposed to be, that's supposed to be right now. Ours is a whole financial planning state of the union, which is already stressful. So we're trying to sandwich that properly. Um, so whatever works for you, that's what you have to kind of figure it out. Okay. But again, no more than an hour. Otherwise, you're going down a rabbit hole and you don't want that, especially for your once a week meeting. So you want to plan your next meeting. Um, and before you do that, um, remember I said we closed it out with a sandwich. So what can I do within this next week? Remember, you want to keep it short and measurable for this time. What can I do for you next week? to make you feel like you're more loved, right? Because that's one thing you don't want to feel like you're, you don't want your, sp your spouse, your partner, whomever, to feel like they are not loved. Remember I talked about that you don't want your, your relationship to feel like it's a roommate situation, right? So how can, you know, that's where you have this conversation before you close out. Okay, we're going into the next week. How can I make you feel like you're more loved and I don't want to you know I don't that make you feel like you know I, I don't know how can I show that my love and appreciation for you more that's it so that you can see that feel more loved I don't know I, I just don't like that whole make you feel more loved because you can't make anyone feel loved it's either they feel it or they don't um and 
you know, we can be the ones pouring out the affection, touching, feeling, kissing, all these things. And that still does not make that person feel loved because that may not be what they want to feel loved. So asking that question, what can I do to help you feel more loved is, is valid. It's valid. And I did not see the validity in it before until it was pointed out to me. I was like, whoa, wait, you're right. Because me... I'm, you know, me doing what I do may not make them feel like they're love. It, it could be just normal everyday, you know, terms of infection, affection or whatever. And it's like that may not it just can go over their head or whatever. And that see, be seen as a loving gesture where you're thinking and feeling it as a loving gesture, but it's not taken that way from your spouse or, or significant other. So, yeah, so. And when you're at the state of this union discussion, you each are going to share what it is that you can do to be more connected in the weeks coming. You know, share what you what you want to happen, what you see happening and what you want to change, if that's the case. And one thing, name at least one thing that, you know, in the next couple of weeks or next coming week that you want more of to help build that connection. All right. And even if that's something as simple as, you know, cooking dinner with me once a week or while we're sitting down watching TV, hold my hand or whatever, read a book together, whatever, whatever it is that makes you feel that connection. Think about it and, you know, process it and then incorporate it into your routine. And we're going to talk about routines, too, because you should have a routine of some sort. And then you set your date and your time for your next check-in, your next weekly check-in. Um, and then put it on the calendar so that it helps you both remember. And then so it's not forgotten, like, oh, my God, it's, it's 8 o'clock. We're supposed to have this meeting. And then it feels like a dread, right? But if it's on the calendar and you both know it's there, then you know it's coming. Um, and it, it prevents any issues. And it helps become this practice become a habit, right? So you just put it on a calendar and then you build it from there. So um, I know I mentioned habits really quickly and routines. And it's it's one of the things that is suggested. And I didn't, I thought we had routines, but apparently um, my husband doesn't see them as routines. I see them as routines, but I don't know. But, you know, having routines is key too. Some things like we know date night, date night is a routine. So putting it on your calendar and having a routine, even even if it's every Wednesday night, you're going to down to the Chicago club and you're going to see R&B night. Or if you're going to dinner at the Chinese buffet, whatever. Or if you're going to sit and watch your favorite show, whatever it is that your date night is, make sure you, you stick to it and, and it'll become a routine, right? But other routines too, like... Um, even if it's something like kissing your spouse on the forehead, that should be a routine. Holding hands while watching TV, that could be a routine. Um, just just sitting down and having a conversation and about the day, that that's a routine. Talking about how how your day went when you come home and actively listening to the response, not just saying, "Oh, how was your day?" and you're going about the other your business or you're looking at your phone. Right. Be actively engaged in the conversation. So these are these those things that um, we kind of gotten away from and just don't pay attention to as a couple, as as a unit. And so it's just rebuilding these skills. Right. And some are learning these skills because, like I said, it's not very often that those of us in the black and brown community seek help. And when we do seek help, it's usually after huge blowout arguments and we're really ready to part ways so we use it therapy as a last ditch effort let's change that let's use therapy to continue to communicate effectively to each other and to other people right because even though we use these tools for each other we can use these tools out in the community as well because as leaders many of us are leaders in our community we're leaders in our jobs and uh, leaders in our home we can have effective communication so have knowing how to do the whole appreciation sandwich, how to effectively have a conversation saying, you know, I saw what you 
um, I hear what you said and this is what I took from it. So effectively acknowledging each other um, can go way beyond just us in our home. It helps in the community as well. So definitely um, I suggest to anyone who's planning to be married or in a long-term relationship with someone, definitely having a communication uh, class or meeting with a therapist to talk about communication and checking in about your communication. I think that's that's doable and it's, it should be done and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not airing out your business and you know because that's one of the things us in the, in the black and brown community, right? Your business stays in your house. Nobody outside needs to know your business. Um, so that's that's the way it goes. We'll figure it out. So we need to change that that um, that verbiage and be better for each other and that makes us better for our children as well because I noticed that I communicate better with my children um, having been through and learned different leadership styles and communication through business and at home so yeah there, there's that um, so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and stop talking right now um, because it is getting a little difficult for me to continue. My head is starting to hurt uh, just, a little, just a tad. Um, but I want to thank you guys for joining me um, today. Thank you for to tuning in. Uh, if you have not paid attention to the changes of some of the things that's happening or recall, we are now on Roku. WUBI Ubiquity Radio is on live on Roku TV. And we are, I have an app is up and running. So WUBI.live. And you can download the app on your Google Play, Apple, Apple Play, um, all those things. And um, definitely take a look at the lineup and see who's on. Um, like I said, I am loving the DJs that are on. Um, that is my music in the afternoon. Um, love. I still haven't cat caught caught up with um, the six a.m. show. I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I I have a routine in the morning. So um, turning on the TV or listening to the radio is not part of that. So I have to um, at least catch Lynn's show once um, just to show respect to one another on our station um and just you know that's what we do we support each other and what is it without one another's support so that's what we do so yes so wubi.live if you have not chimed in yet and um yeah so uh what is it uh divine nubian essentials sorry my head is so cloudy DivineNubianEssentials.com. If you have not tried Divine Nubian Essentials, what are you waiting for? Because your skin is telling you they need it. Um, so give it a try. If you have skin, then you're in. Please. Um, it's it's online, DivineNubianEssentials.com. Uh, we are not doing any more pop-ups for the rest of this year. I'm not sure when we're going to do our next pop-up, but I will definitely keep you posted on that. And then if by any means that you need assistance with uh, any nursing education or healthcare education needs, Collins Education Resource Management, CollinsERM.com, will be happy to help you out with any of that as well. So in that, I want to say, tell me how you guys communicate with one another. Share how um, you navigate difficult conversations with your significant other and how do you how do you start conversations when they're hard um, because that's the hardest part right starting the conversation we don't want to talk about it we want to let it go and and let it die but we have to talk about it so how do you have those difficult conversations with your significant other even if it's your children how do you have those difficult conversations with your children because that's a real thing too Right. So please do share. Uh, go to the soulfuleclectic.com and definitely share. I have the blog up and running. So if you have a piece that you want to share as well, send it to me. I'll happily um, read over it and post it. So again, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Please take care of yourself. 
and each other. Namaste.